Pretty Trades here, and today I'm going to go over all the common problems with the Jeep Grand Cherokee model years 2011 to 2022, and that's the WK2 model designation. So this is my 2014 Grand Cherokee. I have about 85,000 miles on it. I've owned it for about five years now, so I've had a pr my fair share of problems with it. And overall, I think it's a pretty reliable car, but there are quite a few things that tend to go wrong on these vehicles fairly commonly. My vehicle has probably seen about half of the things on this list. All right, first we're gonna start with a lot of the mechanical issues, and then we're gonna work towards some of the cosmetic issues. One of the most common ones is the oil filter housing, which is where your oil filter sits in. If you tighten it too hard, it will break and crack, and what will happen is it will leak oil down onto the engine. They're made out of some really brittle plastic, and so it's extremely common for these to be leaking or weeping on cars. As long as it's not gushing oil and you're losing a considerable amount in between changes, I wouldn't really worry about it because almost all of them leak. And again, if they just weep a little bit, that's fine. But if it's leaking enough where you're needing to add oil in between changes, it's probably time to change it out. Because it's not a super simple job to do. It's connected to a lot of different parts on the motor. If you do do your own oil changes, make sure you don't over tighten the oil filter housing. On the V8s especially, the water pumps are known to go out prematurely. So that's something to watch out for. On the V6s, the thermostats go out pretty frequently. It will throw a code that says it's running too cool or too cool if the temperature is detected, which means that the thermostat is always open. Um, but the thermostat is actually in a really nice location. You don't have to drain the coolant out. You just can change it out, top off your coolant, and it takes about 30 minutes to change. And the part's only like $20, so that's a pretty easy fix. I did have that happen around 65,000 miles. Some of the early V6 models had some issues with the heads warping and causing head gasket issues. Um, most of the ones that have been repaired already have aren't a problem anymore, and they did extend the warranty on those. So if you're buying a car now with a V6, it probably has already had that issue fixed or it's probably not gonna have that issue. Another super common spot for them to leak is from the steering rack and most of them just weep a little bit of fluid, steering fluid. It's not something that's super big problem unless again, it's leaking it out every couple weeks and it's about a thousand dollars or so to replace the steering rack. So if you can avoid doing that, just keep topping it up and keep an eye on the levels. And the last super common one under the hood is the motor mounts. The motor mounts seem to go out on all of these cars. Um, mine went out at around 65,000 miles. It looks like it's leaking oil because there's fluid inside the mounts. So if you notice what looks like oil coming out underneath the car, check it, clean it up, see if it comes back. And if you can trace it, you can usually trace it up to where a motor mount is. The other symptom it has is on idle. It has a very slight rumble when it's idling. When you're driving normally though, you don't even notice it at all. Another really common issue on these cars is the hoods. They would have corrosion along the front lip here. The hoods are made of aluminum. And they had a lot of problem with them bubbling up and starting to look like rust bubbles underneath. It's not actually rust, but it is the aluminum corroding and it's a very common problem. Most of the dealers are pretty good about replacing them, especially if your car is on the newer side. Let me know in the comments which problems you've been having with your Jeep Grand Cherokee or ones that I missed. Back here we have two um, with the gas pump. When you go to pump gas, a lot of the times if you put the nozzle in the regular way, it will constantly click off and it won't allow you to fill your tank. Really common on these cars, you have to tip your gas nozzle upside down, so pointing down into it. Uh, I, I haven't had that issue on this car, but it's super common with these vehicles. Um, so just something to be aware of. So the air ride suspension. This car doesn't have air ride, but air ride is notorious for having issues with leaks. And the rubber airbags are a super common failure point. Uh, they just start to leak and they won't hold air and you gotta get them replaced every couple of years. Another super common one up here by the dash is if you have the leather wrap dashboard, the leather tends to start peeling and pulling off of the dashboard. Usually the dealers will cover that. Also while we're up here, the blend door actuator for the HVAC, the heating and cooling is another very common failure point. What the blend door does is it allows the air to divert to the different vents when you change the settings. Um, and if the blend door breaks, usually what you'll have happen is half of the car or certain vents will have different temperatures coming out of them. Like if you have your air on, it might be really cold on one side and normal air coming out of the other. Or if your heat's on, the heat might be coming out of just certain vents and it'd be cold in other vents. So if that's happening, it's your blend door actuator. That is a very tricky job because it's inside the dash. You got to tear a whole bunch of stuff up to get it to it. In here with the transmission, the uh, transmission on these, the ZF8 speed is known to have a really rough shift on your first start of the day when the engine's cold from one to two you'll go and you'll start to accelerate in first and when it goes to shift a second it goes boom and it like really jerks the car this is a super well-known issue um, it happens on almost all the cars there isn't really a fix the dealers don't know exactly how to fix it 
And so again, they say it's normal operation. So if you notice a little hard shift on your first shift from one to two in the morning, it's extremely common and I wouldn't worry about it. Another thing while we're in here, these interior panels with the rose gold on them, especially they are in and around on the chrome here. This area, they are known to scratch very easily. So that's another thing to look out for if you have rings or if you're constantly doing a lot of movement or if you have dogs running across here, getting scratches on these are very common and they look terrible. And the last really common problem with these cars is the key fob batteries tend to wear out really quickly. I don't know if it's just the way that the keyless entry system is set up, but I have to replace it every single year, it seems like. Uh, they're easy to replace, they're cheap, so I don't really mind doing it. But um, it's just another little thing that goes wrong with these cars. Overall, I think these are really good cars. I think they're fairly reliable. There's a few small issues. Most of them are minor, and many of the bigger ones are covered under warranty, or the dealer will cover them. So um, if you're looking at purchasing a WK2 Jeep, um, I would recommend them as a good car. Um, I think some of the bigger problems are if you start running into electrical problems, and that, that can be somewhat common on these cars, but I, I haven't heard of it as being a widespread issue.